Hello once again, Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Today we're going to be building a little welding cart for the oxyacetylene tanks and the welding apparatus that we can find in AMT's 1953 Ford pickup truck. Now there is a little welding setup with a cart that you can easily find in the weekend wrenching set, but we're not talking about that one because what I want to do is I want to make a video where I build the weekend wrenching set as well as the tip top shop and the get on up kits but that'll be a much later video the reason why i want to build this little welding cart for this kit is because it doesn't really have one the tanks are meant to be attached to the inside of the pickup truck bed and uh, for me that's just not really where i want to go pardon me go with that so we're going to be looking at the welding cart that comes out of my uncle's Dykes Automotive Encyclopedia. And this encyclopedia also includes gas engines in it. But there is a lot of uses for these welding tanks without the cart. And we'll take a look at that in just a minute. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and check out our welding cart. To begin with, we should take a look at what tools actually come in the AMT 53 Ford pickup truck. So here they are listed in the instruction sheet. We have a hammer, a screwdriver, pair of pliers, adjustable wrench, and two different sizes of open-ended wrenches. We also have a little scissor jack, as well as the jack crank and handle. And then we have a fire extinguisher, but what we really want to take a look at are these two-piece welding tanks and the cutting torch. Now the oxyacetylene tanks are just meant to be glued into the back of the pickup truck bed when you're building the service edition, but I don't really like that because I don't think it's safe. I mean, these could fall over or something like that, unless this band is meant to be hinged in so that it can be welded to the side of the pickup truck bed uh, you know, prior to the tanks being put in, of course, and then unhinged here, sort of like um, stocks or like the handcuffs or something like that, and uh, just swing this open so you can put the tanks in and then close it and lock it so it won't fall over in the truck as you're going down the road. Our oxyacetylene tanks are located on the parts tree as part number 89 and 90 for the right and left hand sides of the tanks, and they do have the gauges on top, but the gauges are only molded on one of the sides. And they are a little bit fragile right here on the tips where the little pipe comes up. So just be careful with that. As you can see, there are no mold marks on the outsides of the tanks, which are really nice. And you do have an oxygen and acetylene label molded in right here and here. And if we turn this over, there are mold marks, but they are on the insides of the tanks, which is really nice because they'll be covered completely up once glued. But as you can see, this little stem is molded perfectly circular, but it, the flatness of the tank right here, that's the weak point. So be very careful that you don't knock these off accidentally, or else you won't have your gauges on there when you go to glue your tanks together. However, you could drill a tiny little hole and just try to sink that in a little at the top if that does happen. Our cutting torch for our oxyacetylene tanks are a little harder to find. They are located on the chrome parts tree and it is part 338, which is right here, sandwiched just before the valve covers and just after the taillights for the custom fenders. So if I bring this into the camera, you can see it clearly right there now. And it's got the handle and the little adjuster here, and then the torch end. And that, of course, is to adjust the flame coming out of the torch. So again, it's a really nice piece. And uh, turning it over, I don't really see any mold marks on the back of it. So again, it is really, really nice. And there are the two points for the air hoses or the gas hoses to come in here. So again, be very careful with this. It is connected just on the one point, which is really nice because you can cut that off and then cover over where you cut off with the chrome pen or maybe a brass or gold color, depending on how you want your oxyacetylene torch to look. So here I have two sets of the oxyacetylene tanks, 
And the first set, as you can see, doesn't have any of the gauges on. Now that is because I accidentally broke these off a long time ago and I lost the gauges. So what I did is I filed the tops flat. I still have the little screws on here and that is for the caps that would be on the tanks when they come separately from the, well, manufacturer, I guess, or the company that fills the gas tanks. So over here we have the gauges and I glued these together because they're just the two pieces, you know, the front and the back. And I cleaned up all the seam lines and everything on here. I also cut off the torch on our chrome parts tree and did a little bit of touch up. So I had this a little bit wrong when I was describing it before. So here we have the tip. This is the trigger up here to turn on the gas and get it out of the torch end. These little bits right here and here, those are the knobs to adjust your oxygen and acetylene and to get that torch end going. And then down below are the spigots that will attach up onto the hoses. And the hoses will go on the bottom of here and here. And these are the, uh, the regulators to turn your gas on. And then up above you have your dials to see how much pressure is coming out of each tank. Here we have an illustration of the oxygen tank as well as the acetylene tank from my auto body collision repair textbook that I got back in the 1990s when I took that course. So what we see here is the removable steel safety cap, the double seated bronze valve which is broken down right here, the pressed steel neck ring, and then it says the cylinder is pressed from a solid piece of steel. Over here on the acetylene cylinder, we also have the removable metal cap in the steel valve. And then here we have a safety fuse plug and then long fiber asbestos underneath. And then it is filled with monolithic filler or balsa wood that's included in the acetylene gas. Down below we have fine asbestos and then we have safety fuse plugs. And that is the acetylene cylinder construction. The first thing I want to address is a repair on these tanks with the broken off gauges. And instead of repairing them, what I want to do is I want to make some caps for these and make them as if they are cylinders that have just arrived from the manufacturer. So on the tops of the cylinders, you'll note that there are these threads here. This is a gigantic screw basically on the top of each of the cylinders. And these caps go on top of them when they're in the factory or the warehouse or whatever. And that is so that if one of these falls over, it doesn't break off the little spigot that's supposed to be sticking out of here where you attach on the gauges. So basically what we want to do in order to make these caps is to use some of our extra sprue from parts trees and just cut off the round part of the sprue, not the crosses or anything like that, and put this end into a drill. And with our files, once the drill is spinning, to round off the top like that. And then we can come in with a set of drills and drill two holes, one on top of each other, and then cut out the extra in the middle to make that elongated hole. Now, the reason why these caps have the hole is so that you can put a metal bar inside there and crack them off to unscrew them from the tops of the cylinders. So let's reproduce that. So what I'm gonna do is start up the drill and I'm gonna use this hobby saw and just cut off this end of the sprue and then I will start shaping up the top. So enjoy this music and we'll begin.
Well, I hope you enjoy that little musical interlude. And so what we have now is the sprue turned into a domed cap. And we need it now to look much like this with the slot in the center. So what I'm going to use is a 1 16th drill from our drill bit. And I'm just going to drill two little holes side by side, one on top of the, each other. And then open that up and turn it into an oval shaped hole. So here I've drilled both holes. There's the top one and there's the bottom one. I know you can't really see it because of the light, but they're there. So what I do is continue to drill through with my drill until it pops out the other end. And then in this little spot between the two holes, you sort of have a figure eight with a little bit sticking in there. You just take your number 16 hobby blade and clean those out so that both holes now become an oval. Here is one of the caps for the oxygen acetylene tanks. And all I have to do now is just cut it a little lower down here, just underneath that hole. And I'll do this by putting it in the drill again. And just like how I cut the piece of sprue originally, I'll do the same technique and cut off the bottom. So here we have our homemade cap for the oxy and acetylene tanks. I will have to make another one, which I'll do off camera. But basically all that needs to be done now is the bottom needs to be filed flat and the little screws on the tops of these bottles needs to be cut off because in the real world, the cap would be screwed right over top of those threads and you wouldn't even see it. And now we have our oxygen tank with the delivery cap on the top. And this is what it would look like before the actual welder undid the cap and put the gauges on. So there you go. Now all I need to do is make one for the acetylene and then I can mount these up against the wall at the back in my garage diorama in the storage area. Here we have the before and after of our oxyacetylene tanks. So before we have our shipping caps on top of the cylinders and I did cut down the threads on here and just left a little bit of a flat spot on top of each of the tanks so it looks accurate as to what this would be in the real world. And then here is the after, after the welder has unscrewed the two caps and then installed the gauges. Here we have our oxygen and acetylene tanks hooked up to our welding cart as shown in this illustration in the Dykes Encyclopedia. Now these tanks had many uses back in the early days as well as today. You can weld with the torch, you can get a cutting torch attachment to chop apart metal, and back in the day you could also get this decarbonizing outfit. Here is an oxygen decarbonizing outfit which uses our oxygen tank and this gun up here. So this is a torch and what they would do is they remove the valve plug out of the top of the cylinder head they lit a match and they threw it down in here and then they used the torch and the long rod to make a little fire in here and burn out all the carbonization out of the top of the valve. And uh, this is the way they would do it. So in order to understand why they decarbonated the tops of the cylinders and everything like they did is because this is what's going on inside the combustion chamber. So you have your air gas mixture coming up and getting ignited by the spark. But because the spark plug is not dead center over top of the piston and the valves are not like in the modern car up above or something, what we have is an issue of how the explosion burns inside here. So you get the gas coming in and getting compressed by the top of the cylinder. And then when it sparks, the spark travels all the way across here gets on the top of the uh, cylinder and up into the corners here 
and all the carbon is basically accumulating in the corners on top of the the cylinder and on top of your valves. So in order to get this out they had to blow it out with air or just take the top of the head off and manually carve all the carbon out of here and then put your engine back together so that it would run nice and smooth. And just to show this, this is the scraping method to remove all that carbon. You can either do it with the cylinders in the block still and use like this little putty knife sort of thing in order to get the carbon off or take out each piston and carve it off with this sort of tool. So here we have a decarbonizing unit as attached onto the oxygen. Another place where the torch was used was on the radiator bench and it's actually mounted up top so that the person working on the radiator can bring the torch down and do some brazing in to fix the radiators. So what they have here is the lines for the oxyacetylene going through metal pipes, which would end up going to the tank somewhere being mounted on the wall away from this whole area. And then the gases would come up through the pipes and then be attached to the torch from here. And then the torch would have the rubber nozzles going off for either side. And uh, that's how they would use it on the bench. The oxyacetylene gas tanks were also used in the battery bench. And that was in order to melt and burn the lead in the batteries in order to fix them back in the day when they actually did take apart batteries and repair them. The other area where they used the torch was in heat shrinking and auto body collision repair. Now heat shrinking is when you have a panel that is so damaged that the only way to bring it back into shape is by heating it by making these small circles around the warped spot and then hitting it in with your hammer and by hitting it with a hammer, it causes the hot metal to shrink back to its original shape. This illustration shows the hammering of the hot spots. So this circle right here is where you heated it up with the torch. And then these smaller circles are your hammer blows. And you basically go around clockwise until this heat shrinked panel goes back into shape. This image from my textbook on auto body collision repair shows the gorge type damage. And then if I move the book over a little bit, it shows how to fix that damage using the torch in a heat shrinking method. So the other thing is I notice there's chains around here holding it to the cart. And the cart is actually a simple construction. It's just this rectangular frame in the back and then a platform. There's metal wheels with an axle going through underneath here. And then there's two rods that come up and bend into handles so you can move this around. So getting back to this chain thing, it's like the chain is hooked to the back in here. But if you take a look at our tanks from the 53 Ford, they're actually locked in with these bands that go around. So what I'm thinking is making these like C clamps and putting hinges on one side and then little tabs for a latch and um, for a lock to go through on these sides. So what I'm thinking is to make it look like these bands are welded to the back frame here, uh, or maybe not welded. Yeah, I guess they would be welded on one end, maybe in the back. And then where the hinge is in front and where the latch is on the other side, that's what would swing open so you can get the tanks out and uh, off the cart for replacements. And then the bands would also hold them in much in the same way as a chain, but maybe even better because it's a tighter fit. What we're looking at here is the number two Imperial welding outfit, and it consists of one type BB welding torch with six welding tips, number one, two, three, four, five, and six, one type H carbon removing tip, one type zero, zero lead burning tip, one type G radiator soldering tip, one type F brazing tip, one type D oxygen regulator with 50 pound working pressure gauge, one type DD acetylene regulator with 50 pound working pressure gauge, one number 60H adapter for Presto Life tank, one number 61H adapter for commercial and air reduction tanks, one 10 foot oxygen hose with coupling, one 10 foot acetylene hose with coupling, one pair of welding goggles, supply of cast iron and Norway iron welding rod and flux, 
and then one spark lighter and one welding handbook weight 16 pounds packed in the carton okay so this is back in 1926 the price of the number two welding outfit complete with extra cutting attachment is $44.50 with cutting attachment $10 extra now uh, what we get with the AMT kit is just one of the torches and of course our gauges but the one thing that I find interesting is here we've got a pair of goggles and the only goggles I've seen is actually on the Natey figure and she's wearing them up in her hair here and that is from Masterbox but she is supposed to be a post-apocalyptic type of uh, character here so these will look really good. The welding outfit will look really good with Natey. Now I'm going to use these little wheels on the welding cart. These are 170 second skill military wheels or possibly even aircraft wheels. Now I did have a big box of wheels but I ended up giving it to somebody that was working on a military diorama and now I kind of regret that because these are the only wheels I have. And this funny little thing it was supposed to be a World War I cannon that I built when I was about 11 years old. So basically I can sacrifice wheels on this because <laughs> this thing is rather goofy. And uh, it's not a piece of my childhood that I'd, I'm going to have like broken dreams about. So it's okay. I'm going to take the wheels off of this. Even though I do like the steel looking ones in the Dykes Encyclopedia a lot better. So now let's try to figure out some measurements so that we can build our cart. And I'm purely just going off of what this looks like over here in the drawing from the Dykes Encyclopedia compared to the tanks. So what it seems like we've got here is the base of the tanks are at the edge of the tray down at the bottom. And I have this plastic. This is some plastic that I found. I've got a lot of scraps kicking around here. So what I need to do is just measure the bottom of the tank using my ruler here and find out that this looks almost like it's two millimeters. So I just slide down the base here of the ruler and that is really what it appears to be, two millimeters. So what I would do is take the plastic and then figure out where two millimeters is and just draw a line with my pencil here get a couple of marks on here and then you would connect the marks with your ruler and then cut that off with your hobby knife uh, by dragging the back of the knife across a ruler and, and cutting it off now the other measurement we need to figure out is how tall this back piece is so it appears to be kind of coming into right about here on the tank, just above the label. So that measurement, if we move our ruler around a bit here, right about there, seems to be, let's see, there would be 10 in here, and that's the tall one. So that's five, six, it looks like 4.6 millimeters. So let's figure this thing out. So 4.6 millimeters by two millimeters across and down here for the plate. So let's cut that out of our plastic and I'll come back and show you the parts. Uh, one measurement I forgot about was actually this one and it's quite important. How wide are the tanks? And that to me looks like about one millimeter. I think one millimeter, maybe, yeah, one millimeter, maybe in 1.2 millimeters would uh, possibly give enough distance here at the front of the cart, maybe 1.3, but nothing too big. Well, here, let's adjust this up. So there's 1.2. And that looks like it would be sticking out quite far, actually. So there's one. One would be right on the edge. 1.1. Wow, it's such a big difference between one and 1.1. 1. 1. 
so let's just go one. Well, I've got a lot of these styrene, so I'll cut one at one and we'll see what it looks like. So here I've done a little re-measuring. When I drew the pencil line across and put the welding tanks up on there, it was very close to the edge. So the blue line down here is the actual 1.2 millimeters. And as you can see, it is a lot longer. So I'm going to cut it across the blue line instead of the white line. And actually, this is 1.2 centimeters, not millimeters. Because if it was 1.2 millimeters, it would just be like not even the width of the pencil line here. So I made a little mistake there, but overall, this is how the tray should look. So here we have the plate cut to the proper distance from the back of the cart out to the front. So this way, and that equals this way. Now I need to cut it this way along the front and get it just behind the tank. And the other thing is, I think my plastic is too thin based on the thickness of the bottom of this cart. And I'm going to have to attach the handles to the front here and on the other side and come up there. So I think what I'll do is I'll just glue, once I get this cut to the right shape, I'm going to glue it onto the rest of the plastic that I have here and then cut it out again. And that should give me a double thickness to this plastic plate. And that should hopefully look a lot better for the thickness here on the bottom of the tanks, of the cart on the bottom of the tanks. So next up, what I'll do is measure out again what this is. I'll probably add a millimeter in. I think that was about two centimeters. So I'll add a little bit here and there and then cut it to the right length. So there is our bottom plate all cut out. That's the plate that's right here. And it's not the double thickness yet, but that's just the size. But yeah, I couldn't believe this either. That is basically how narrow this cart is compared to the illustration. So unless these tanks were actually bigger than what these ones are, I mean, this is the best I'm going to be able to do with the size comparison. But I think so far, maybe we're off to a good start. So I will glue this base plate down and then cut it to double thickness and then try to figure out this in the back, which just looks like maybe maybe I can do this up out of C-channel from uh, Plastruct. I think maybe I'll try that, like a one, two, three, maybe one across the back as well for four. So let's give that a go. Oh, and the bands on these tanks. I was looking at some drawings and what I think this is, is the bottom band would be solid with the two holes. The top band would open because what you would do is lift up the cylinders and drop them into this shape. Maybe even, uh, I don't know, that would be a, quite a high drop and you'd have to try to maneuver it through two loops. But maybe both of the loops are like that, a figure eight sort of thing. And you drop the tanks in from the top down. So maybe that's how it goes. So you wouldn't need the chain because this would all be like two rings that these things are going through and they wouldn't fall over with the two rings. So I was going to use C channel up around here for that rear support for our welding cart. But then if I move the book down a bit, looking at this one at the bottom, which is supposed to be a rear view of the welding cart, this looks like solid square tubing or something to that effect. So instead of using the C channel, which is what I was going to use, I'm going to instead go back and look through my little collection of square tubing and then make this out of that. So I don't know if this square tube is actually too thick, but sadly it's the, <laughs> the biggest one I have. And uh, the issue is I don't have anything smaller that would make this up. And I also don't have any square solids that I was thinking of using instead that are that size again, because the square solids I have are either so small that they're or so thin that they're just basically like little ghosts almost, or they're th so thick that, that uh, again, it, this would totally lose its thing. So I'll just try to use this as best I can. So here's an example of do as you go. 
So what I've done is I've taken the square tubing and I've gone up here four and a half centimeters. And then across the top, I've gone the same measurement of two centimeters for this distance here. But the base I haven't cut out yet. I've glued it to the other piece of styrene. And what I think I'm going to do is leave a distance the same thickness as this square tubing. And the reason for that is so that I can glue the uprights back here, like in that area, because this is behind that plate, just like here. And now I've got an area for these square tubings to land. So what I'll do is I'll just cut it back behind here and then cut this way as well. And that should give me enough support on the bottom of those square pieces to actually give them a floor of their own. Here I have the frame of our welding cart, and I set it up against my sanding block because it's a nice square flat edge, and I wanted to make sure that the sides of this was going to be square with the base and that kind of thing. So now we can actually remove the cart and take a look at it so far. And I think I've done a pretty good job on this. There's the uh, solid, or the hollow square tube, I should say. And uh, again, it looks right. It looks very much like what's going on with the cart here, as far as a frame goes. So then what I would do is just check it against the tanks. And I do believe I've got it pretty much right just by eyeing it and, uh, you know, measuring it according to what the tanks are. So there it is there. Whoa. There it is there in the image. And here it is here as the model. So now what I need to do is attach the wheels and attach these rods, which end up being the handles. And then I've got to figure out how to wire in the cutter. But I think before I wire in the cutter, I should paint these parts and then glue them in so that I've got a nice base there. And I have noticed that on some of the other carts, there are little hooks or whatever to wrap the hose up instead of just wrapping it around the uh, oxygen cylinder. And some of them have toolboxes on the back for all the welding tips and all of this sort of thing in here. So I don't know how far I'm going to carry this cart, but overall I think I'm doing pretty good. What I have here is 1 16th inch diameter rod from Evergreen Strip Styrene, and this is number 222. What it is, is it's 0 0.062 diameter, or 1.6 millimeters, and I want to use these as the handles for the welding cart, the two on the side. So that would be there, and of course on the other side. And then with this point or 0 0.100 inch rod, or 2.5 millimeters, I'm going to use that as the rear axle for the wheels going across the back. So I think those two sizes should be about right. And the easiest is to actually cut this one first and then glue the wheels onto the ends. And I'm going to cut this one just a little longer than the cart. So that was two centimeters, so maybe 2.1 centimeters, just so that the wheels can stick out a little bit beyond the edges of the cart. Here we have the next step of our welding cart, and that was to attach the axle on. And I did decide to cut the axle at 2.2 centimeters and then glued on those wheels. And what I noticed here is just the bottom of the wheel touches the ground because when the tanks are set up straight up and down, this has to be on the ground itself. So I've duplicated that here by putting the axle up quite a bit high. And if I just put my block here, you can see now that the bottom of the cart and the bottom of the wheels should all be in line so that this thing would sit down flat. And when you move the tanks, you actually tilt the cart backward and then you're able to roll it on the wheels like that. So I think I've duplicated this pretty well. And that would mean that the next step is to add in these handles. And what I did is I cut the tiny rod to be five centimeters long. 
so that I can glue them at the angle and then bend them at the top using my half round pliers. I think that should suffice here because the plastic is pretty soft. So that's what I'll do next. And I might even just file down just a little bit on the bottom to get flat spots on these rods so that they have more of a gluing surface onto the flat of the bottom of the cart. So that's what I will do next and show you the results. Here's our welding cart so far and I'm going to let this dry overnight before I bend the tops here. What I actually discovered is five millimeters is not long enough. Five millimeters just gets you up to here. So I recut new pieces at six millimeters so that I'm able to bend these over enough, give them the curve in there and uh, turn them into handles. And then I can cut them a bit shorter, maybe cut them off with my snips instead of my hobby saw and then clean them up. But overall, I think I've got this now perfectly and the tanks should be able to fit right in just like that. Now, the other thing that I did was I used the tester's tube glue and I really laid it on thick up in here just to give enough glue support. And the other part about this is I let the glue squish out a bit and that'll make it look like it was actually welded together itself. And uh, that should give the right look, actually. So all I need to do now is let this dry overnight. Then I can bend those ends. And then I can paint this, and I can paint my tanks separately, and then uh, glue them in together here. Make this cart look really cool. So I let the glue dry overnight, and I've been waiting all day to bend the handles on the cart. The thing is, I had to work today, so I'm now off work and able to do this. So let's just take our little oxyacetylene tanks out of here. And I have these pliers, and they're half round and then flat there and there. So now, uh, let's see, I will just go and hold this right on the top and then bend this down. I'm gonna bend over a little bit. Oh, and I broke it. Well, there goes that hype. <laughs> Hmm. Well, now what do I do? Okay, I think what I'll do here is I'm going to cut these at an angle instead and then just glue them coming straight out. So let's do that instead since I broke it and uh, we'll carry on. All right, so with a little bit more care, I was actually able to bend one of the handles properly like I wanted it to but I still have to now deal with this one. So one of the ways is actually just to remove this and redo it, but I think I might just be able to maybe use my file here and angle this a little bit and then do the same on the broken off piece and that should give me about a 45 degree angle in there and then I can glue that up. So here's the handles of our welding cart. This is the bent one on this side, and this was the one that snapped off. Now, what I think I'll do is let the glue dry on here and then carefully sandpaper this and try to use a bit of the file just to round the top of it a little bit. But overall, I don't think it's gonna to matter too much for this because, you know, the welding cart in the diorama could be in a corner or something, and I don't think anyone's gonna be looking across to try to compare the handles. However, what I learned is just to bend this about halfway and then use your fingers to bend it the rest of the way down and uh, that'll prevent it from it snapping right in here. So anyway, what I'm also thinking of doing is making a little shelf back here for some of the tools for the welder as well as a tube on the side here and that will be for holding like the welding rods and maybe even the flux. But overall, I think this is still going really well. And uh, I think I really captured that look of the cart from the Dykes Encyclopedia. So as an idea, I was thinking of using this 0, 0.020 rod as the welding rods. And this 1 tube 
as the holder for the welding rods. And then for the package shelf, or the tool shelf, I should say, I've got this I-beam that I found. And that's another evergreen strip styrene piece. But if I cut it, you know, off at the same width as the top of the cart, that bar there, I can actually put maybe one or two of the little wrenches in place. And then I could use a little flat piece of styrene and glue it on the ends of the I-beam to act as the end of the shelf or the little box or whatever it is. So overall, I think I've found the right sizes for the items that I need. So here is the tools shelf that I made out of that H-beam. And what I did is just added a little bit of styrene right on the ends just to cap that off. And then that's how the little tray will look. And what I think I'm going to do is glue it a little further down, just not like right on top of that bar there, but just down a bit so that there's a distance between the handles and the tool shelf. Here is the finished tool tray glued onto the back of our welding cart. And what I did was I measured one centimeter from the top edge down and made a mark on both of the posts. And then I glued or put a little glue on the backs of the posts just underneath that mark and then applied the shelf onto the back. And that's basically what it looks like. So what I've done here is I've taken my 1 8 tube and I've glued it onto a scrap piece of plastic. And then with my number 16 hobby blade, I'm going to chip the bottom away so that all that's left is a bit of plastic on the bottom of the tube. And that's going to be the stop at the bottom of the tube. And then I will glue it on the side of the cart. And then I can add in all my little rods here from the 0, 0.020 rod. And those will act as welding rods. So here's the cart with the little tube glued on the side. And that is the holder for that metal wire. Oh my god. Here's the cart with the little tube holder on the side, and that is for our welding rod. And here you can see it. it's basically pretty simple. I was trying to put it somewhere on the cart where uh, you could pull the rods out. And I was going to put it underneath on this side, and then I thought, oh, they're going to hit the tray. So they're here. I don't know if that's really where they should be on the cart, but I think it should work. Now, moving this off... As I was reading through here, it's saying that these coils for the uh, lines for your oxygen and acetylene are supposed to be 10 feet long. So if we take a look at that mathematically, the first thing we have to do is figure out what 10 feet is in inches. So you just multiply 10 by 12 and you get 120 inches. Then we have to divide that by 25 to get into the scale that we need, and that will equal 5 inches. So each of these hoses in 125th scale is 5 inches long. So I need to get a piece of wire, actually two pieces, because I need one for oxygen, one for acetylene. Usually, if I remember this correctly, one of them is red and the other is either green or a blue. And they need to be that way so that you know which one is the acetylene, which was usually the red one. And then the blue one or the green one would be oxygen. And that is so that when you're trying to uh, get your gas mixture together properly for the gun, or for your welding torch, I should say, you know which one is the oxygen and acetylene by looking at the colors of the tubes. So, basically, I need to have one of these in red and the other in either green or blue, and then sort of attach them together in a way, like it is on the gun over here, or the torch, I should say. And then I need to coil them up and around the cart, as well as hook them into the gauges. So all of this I'll have to do using a little drill and a lot of luck. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I'll end up doing next, is adding in the hose and attaching it to the gun, and that's... or the the torch end. And that's going to be really hard because this torch end is really tiny. So here we have our welding cart with the holder for the welding rod. And I was going to try to get 10 into there, but all I could really get was 6. So Nady will have to do with 6 welding rods. But the other thing I wanted to show was this is the wire I want to use 
for our torch end, which is right here, right there. And uh, what I need to do is, whoops, take the file and just carefully file the little ends right there just to get them flat. And then I have to take my little drill and find the thickness of this wire and then carefully just drill a little bit into each side and hope I don't split this or break it off or anything. Or the other way I could just file this flat, as flat as I can get, and crazy glue it to the end. I'm not exactly sure just yet. The other thing I thought of was scraping the plating off this uh, torch end and then maybe gluing it somewhere just you know sort of draping over kind of like it shows in the illustration here but glue it to the actual uh, one of the tanks and then that way this thing won't move and all I need to do is wire it in up in here coil it and then glue it down there and the gun being glued onto the tank will, uh, you know, not make this thing flip around and pop in the air and all that while I'm doing it. Maybe that's the way to go. I'm not too sure. But I'll figure it out. So I'm pretty proud of myself. I actually got the wires from that alternator drilled in and into the welding torch tip right here. So what I had to do is the welding torch tip on those little end points is slightly round and has a seam line right through the center. So to start with, I just took my half round file and I carefully filed those dead flat. And then I took my number 16 hobby blade right on the little point. And very carefully, I found where the dead center is and I just poked it to make two little depressions. Then I've got a zero point, let's see, zero seven zero drill or uh, point zero seven zero whatever it is, out of the little mini set, micro drills. And I was able to drill very carefully up in here. The benefit is these are at angles. So if you over drill, it should come into the center instead of poking out the sides. And then I also drilled into the sides of the regulators on the bottom. And this is five inches coming out here. So you have to be careful on these because this rod is only half cast. So if you use too much pressure, you bend the rod and even snap it off like I did on the other tanks. So just as you're drilling, make sure you hold it very tightly like this and then drill in. The nice part about the regulators is there's a lot of meat around them, plastic wise, so that you can get that hole right in there. The end of the torch is a little more difficult because you're really dealing with almost nothing, as you can see here. But one thing I realized about this torch, this is the cutting torch, because here you can see that the tip is going straight off on the angle, and the trigger is to add more gas once you get it fired up. So um, you get a little flame out there, then you hold the trigger down and it shoots out the big flame. And that's what you'd use to start cutting panels like this, if you were in the hobby world, and this was metal and this thing actually worked. You'd hit that trigger and then come across and cut the panel off and then all the slag would drip out below. So the one thing I need to do with these tanks now is they're not going to be sticking straight out like this with the hoses. So I'm going to leave the acetylene one red, paint the oxygen one green, or maybe blue, and then actually maybe even, hmm. Well, what I need to do is bend these hoses so that they kind of meet each other and, you know, be side to side. I don't want to put too much pressure because it'll start actuating these regulators. But basically, bring it in like that. Ooh, okay, and then wrap them around the tanks. I know I don't really want to do that. I want to wrap them around the cart. But I can wrap them around the tanks very carefully, just being careful not to snap my regulators off. I think I... Yeah, I bent the acetylene one in. <sighs> okay. Oh yeah, you can really see it. There we go. Straighten it up. 
So what I should do really first off is put crazy glue into the torch because that's going to have the most stress in there. But overall, again, this is coming out really nice and I'm so close just to wrapping these. Another idea is to pull them out of the regulators first, then coil it up and leave myself a little bit of space up here and then bend them into the or put them back in the regulators. Maybe that's the safest way to do it because if I put too much coil in here, I'm guaranteed to snap these off. So yeah, that's how I will do it. Here we have the welding cart after I applied the hoses onto our oxyacetylene tanks as well as the cutting torch end. And I do think this came out really well considering that these wires were really, really stiff and hard to bend. I was going to use my curved pliers, which I don't know what happened to those. So I ended up using my finger instead and just coiled the, the hose around the finger. And that seemed to work out pretty well. It looks a little better when it's hanging naturally, of course. But there you can see the welding rod just right in here in the little holder. And I didn't have much on the other side, but there's the tools in the back, the little shelf. Got to add some tools in there. So right now this is all separate because I'm going to have to paint this. So what I'll do, considering that this video is already about an hour long, is just paint this off screen and then show you the results. But overall, I think I did pretty much match the illustration in my uncle's book here. And as you can see, it's got the hoses coming off the regulators and just loosely wrapped around here in any configuration. But it does show the welding torch end hanging over the acetylene tank. I guess I could have done that too, but I think it's all right, really. I think it's okay no matter where it goes. I was going to put two little hooks hanging off here and then try to roll the uh, hoses around the hooks, sort of like what you do with a garden hose. But uh, the issue was, really, it's this bar that comes out here sticks out more than the flat iron bar. So to try to have something behind there, you're constantly in this angle, if you know what I mean. So I do think... Basically how I have them is pretty good. There's the back of the cart, so you can see how that axle went. And now everything's falling apart, so... But basically, there's the other side with the rod and the rod holder. So again, I had fun doing this. Turned out to look really good. So what I'll have to do is, I've just got the hose sitting in the regulators for right now. I did glue it to the torch, just because the torch is really small and you don't want to end up losing it. So I'll just unplug these and then I've got to paint one of the wires blue. And because I coiled it, that might be an issue, but we'll see what happens. And then paint the tanks and paint the cart. And what I'll do is I'll paint these bands the same color as the cart, so it looks like they're a part of the cart. And I would have sprayed the cart, but I think I'm just going to brush paint it. And I'm going to paint it that same green color that I painted the tool chest. So our welding cart is going to end up like with this green color and I think that would tie in really nicely with the 1920s, 1930s type of theme because I do believe, looking at some of the older toolboxes, that they used to be this green color, like the old filing cabinets. So let's get to painting and then once I finish painting I'll show you the results. Here we have our 125th scale welding cart. And I was able to take these hoses and wrap them up around that oxygen tank and actually get the torch to fall off the edge naturally like it shows in the book. And you can see the little gauges that I painted on the regulators up here. And I did add some little rust specks and paint chips along the edges where I thought maybe by putting in these cylinders a couple of times in the cart's lifetime, it would have chipped the edges up along here and maybe up along the top. I also have the welding rod right in the side. Oops, all nicely painted and a bit of chipping there as, you know, you're putting the rods in this tube and they're kind of chipping the edges or something to that effect. I put a little bit of chipping on the back just on that rear axle. And that's, you know, when you're moving along and you stick your foot on this thing as you're rolling it or whatever. Up above, I've got two of the tools. 
So a wrench and a pair of vice grips. I also wore out the tops of the handles. Uh, hang on a second here. I wore out the tops of the handles because at work we've got a couple of metal carts and that's sort of what happens where you put your hands all the time every day. You uh, wear out, oops, uh, you wear out the edges of these handles and that's what I was trying to represent there. It's a combination of the Warhammer paints to give these oxyacetylene tanks and the cart their kind of worn look. I also painted the torch. I looked these up online and uh, this is all like brass up in here and then it's got a little copper tip with a bit of chrome or uh, like polished steel. And then you can see my little gauges that I painted. I had some difficulties painting these because on one of these I painted what I thought was a needle and I actually painted the shadow of the needle. So I had to turn this upside down in order to do it right. You can see the labels oxygen and acetylene that I painted on here. I painted them yellow and dry brushed in the black lettering, which was a real trick. So I'm just going to wind the camera back. And now we can put Natey in the scene. And there you can see just how good this looks because Natey is wearing the welding goggles. She's got a wrench in her hand, of course, a bionic arm. But then putting her in with the welding tank kind of now begins to fill out a scene. And for reference, we also have the toolbox from the previous video. And you can see that the colors are the same. This is that Snarsnick green, just like I painted that. And uh, again, looks really good. And it was pretty easy to make the cart. Oh, the other thing I did was right on the handle here. Remember, I broke it in the video, then I glued it back. I also made it look like it was welded right in here and it's starting to rust just a little bit because again, that's not really where you'd be grabbing, but the handles definitely are. So let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. I'm sure Nady is going to love her new oxyacetylene tank and that toolbox. So again, give it a try. I know it's this was sort of out of my regular building zone sort of thing, my comfort zone, I don't know. And uh, really drilling in these oxyacetylene ends of the hose into the actual torch. It wasn't quite as difficult as I thought it would be, but I actually thought I would uh, expand the holes out there and actually break them so that it wouldn't work. Oh, I also broke the little handle trigger off of here and I was able to glue it back, which was, I was quite amazed I could do that because that thing is about half a millimeter wide by about a millimeter long, maybe two millimeters. And uh, that was really tiny and where it broke off was even tinier, but I was able to glue it back together. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video where we got to build the little welding cart from my uncle's Dykes Automotive and Gasoline Engine Encyclopedia. I hope that you can use this information to build your own little 125th scale welding cart, as well as to have learned about where they use those oxyacetylene tanks back in the past. If you want to support this channel, please do so by becoming a member. A member is different from being a subscriber because with a membership for a little fee each month, very little fee each month, you can help support this channel and make it grow financially, which is not really what subscribers do. Subscribers just say, hey, I really enjoyed this channel. I'm going to watch some more videos. This way you can become more of an active part in this whole process by helping us out here at the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. So click the join button and there will be some details there to help you to help us. So until next time everybody, happy model building and I hope these tanks really help you out and we'll see you in the next video.